Let's walk through how to install Hyper-V in Windows Server. Now this is going to install Hyper-V as a role that we will then use to host virtual machines. And we'll do this in a lot of instances because we can run multiple virtual machines on a single physical computer. And sometimes that actually makes it a little bit more cost efficient because you're running less physical hardware. Now there's caveats to that, right? Because you may be running less physical hardware, but you might need beefier vis physical hardware, especially if you're running a lot of virtual machines. So take that into consideration. You are using typically less power, less cooling, because you're running less physical hardware. So there are some advantages. There's also some great advantages when it comes to flexibility and disaster recovery. So there are some great advantages to running virtual servers. So let's talk about how we would install that Hyper-V role, which will allow us to run virtual servers on Windows Server. So from Server Manager, we're going to go to Manage and Add Roles and Features. And next, we're going to do this uh, as a role or feature-based installation. Now, when we talk about using Hyper-V or uh, for virtualization, sometimes people get confused and try to use this. And this remote desktop services installation, this is for VDI or virtual desktop infrastructure. So yes, it's done using virtual machines or session-based desktop deployment, but it's not virtual servers. Virtual servers, if we want to run, use that, we'll use Hyper-V, and so we'll do a role or feature-based installation. Remember, this option is only used if we're trying to set up a VDI environment. Anything else, we do role or feature based. So I'm going to click next, and we're going to do the server that we've selected. And again, you can do a virtual hard disk in order to do that. By the way, you have to enabled, have enabled nested virtualization. Or you could pick another server to do it on. Since we only have one, we're going to do this one. And then we're going to choose the Hyper-V service. Now, that's going to, or the Hyper-V role. And that's going to want to install a couple of other little management tools. Hyper-V module for PowerShell, Hyper-V GUI management tools. Yep, we want those. So we're going to click on Add Features. Okay, that selects our role. And we're just doing this one this time, so we'll click Next. And then this is, so any features we want to go along with it. Now, if you're doing a larger deployment and you're running Hyper-V with uh, multiple uh, servers, you might want to install failover clustering as well. But Hyper-V gives us some options for, uh, session, or for virtual machine migration even without that. So we'll just click Next here. All right, and then specific Hyper-V settings. So the first setting is what virtual or what Ethernet adapter, what physical adapter do we want to use for our virtual switch? Now I can choose to use this uh, one and only Ethernet adapter. I'm not going to because I want to show you more about virtual switches a little bit later on. But if you know which one you want to use, this is a great place to do it, and it will create a external virtual switch using that particular Ethernet adapter. Now the next option is for migration and this is migrating servers a virtual machine from one physical server to another. So we can choose to allow this server to send and receive live migrations. Now just like the virtual switches if I don't change that or if I don't set that here I can go in and change it a little bit later on. But if I want to take this server to take uh, part in live migrations, I can choose to allow it, and then I can choose which type of security protocol I want to use. Now, notice, if this server will be part of a cluster, do not enable migration now. Instead, you will configure the server for live migration when you create the cluster. So this is different than doing the failover clustering. So before you do your install, if you're going to do multiple uh, physical servers and you want migration working, think through beforehand, do you want this done using failover clustering or do you want this done using live migration? I'm going to go ahead and turn this off for the moment just because I don't need it. And we'll look in a subsequent video at how we can go back and set that. Now, this last one is default stores. And this is where we're going to store our virtual machines. And there's two different things we're going to look at. One's going to be the virtual hard disks, and the other is going to be the virtual machines. Now, this is the default. So you can put uh, virtual machines and or virtual hard disks in locations other than the default stores. But... 
This is where they will default to unless you specifically put them somewhere else. Now, typically what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put your, especially your virtual hard disks, in a location that is a high-speed data store. So we could be talking SAN, we could be talking a, um, a RAID 5 set, uh, something to that effect. We want something that's going to be pretty fast, especially if we're going to have a lot of virtual hard drives stored there. Because if they're all on one physical disk, then there's going to be contention for disk time. So the faster we have our storage, the better off we'll be. So in a production environment, you're probably going to want to change this away from the C drive and put it wherever you have planned for those virtual hard disks to be stored. SAN or RAID array or something like that. All right, next. So this is going to require a system restart. So I'm just going to go ahead and click restart the destination server automatically if required. And do you want to allow automatic restarts? Yes. If you don't, then when it gets done with the install, it's going to throw a flag up here in the notification area, say there's a restart pending, and you can restart it later on. Which, something to do if, again, you're working in a production environment, you want to do the install now, you don't want the server to go down in the middle of the day, you might say, go ahead and install now, I'll reboot it over lunch or at the end of the day or whenever. Whatever your maintenance window is. Okay. That's it. Now, this does our basic installation. We'll come back. I'm going to go ahead and install here in a minute. And we'll come back in a couple of subsequent videos, and we're going to talk about doing some configurations that we skipped over here, like the virtual switch and the live migration. And we'll also talk a little bit more about virtual machines in subsequent videos.